Hi, this is John from Cultured Analysis, and I'd like to welcome you back to our next installment of Kombucha Chem Academy. The topic of today's talk is going to be high performance liquid chromatography, otherwise known as HPLC. Now, this is a technique used to determine um, acid content in kombucha. So in that sense, it's going to piggyback on the last two videos that we've done dealing with pH and titratable acidity, which we will link below. As a quick review, pH is a measurement of the concentration of the hydrogen ion in solution, whereas titratable acidity, or TA, is a measurement of the concentration of the total acid in solution, bound and unbound in terms of the hydrogen ion. Now the thing that makes HPLC important to us, or different from the other two techniques that we've talked about, is that it actually allows us to identify individual acid components in a kombucha sample, which the other techniques do not allow us to do. So as a result, we can get a true fingerprint of exactly what acids are present in a kombucha and what their relative concentrations happen to be, which in turn, we can then relate back to the flavor profile of the kombucha. Now, let's just look momentarily at how the instrument actually works. So if we're dealing with a high-performance liquid chromato chromatography instrument, what we're going to see is that we're going to have several um, common components here. The first one is going to be a pumping system. So in this case, since it's liquid chromatography, the mobile phase or the moving phase that's going to be pushing everything through the instrument has to be a liquid of some sort. So we need to have a pump to move the liquid through the system. Um, just beyond the pump, we have some means of injecting or introducing the sample onto the instrument. And then from that point, we move to the real guts of the instrument, which is the chromatographic column. Now inside of the column, we have what is known as a stationary phase. And it's the stationary phase coupled with the liquid mobile phase that allows us to obtain the separation of the various components in our kombucha sample, as I'll discuss a little bit later. And then finally, as each component comes off of or elutes from the column, that component will be seen by some sort of a detector. And in our case, the detector is an ultraviolet light detector. And we utilize that because most organic acids of interest will absorb ultraviolet light. And then finally, everything moves past the detector and into a waste container. When we look at the output of the detector that we just discussed, what we obtain is a plot called a chromatogram. And what a chromatogram looks like is a plot of the detector response, in this case, the amount of ultraviolet light that gets absorbed at a particular wavelength by our organic acid as a function of time on the x-axis. So the time is important because it allows us to actually see the individual components coming from the column and reaching the detector. Now what we would see here would be a typical chromatogram for a two-component system. In other words, a mixture that contains two individual components of organic acid here. And what we see here is that one component comes off at a shorter time and one component comes off at a longer time. And again, the separation has to do with the relative affinity for each individual component for either the mobile phase, the liquid moving through the system, or the stationary phase found inside of the column. So for example, for the first peak that is coming off here, we would say that the um, organic acid has a greater affinity for the mobile phase, the moving phase, so it comes off of the column more quickly. Whereas the second peak or component here corresponds to an organic acid that due to a difference in structure has a greater affinity for the stationary phase. Welcome to the lab, folks. What we wanted to do here was to show you one of the actual HPLC instruments that we use here at Cultured Analysis. So let's start by um, showing you some of the um, different parts of the instruments that we introduced a little bit earlier in today's video. To begin with, remember we need the liquid mobile phase. So what we actually have here are a series of solvent reservoirs that we can use to store those mobile phases. And from there, we have tubes that run over to our pumping system, which you can see here. 
So this instrument has two sets of pumps. We have an A pump and a B pump, so we can push two different mobile phases either together or separately in time. And from there, we actually have the auto sampler and injection system here. So you can see here that we can load our samples up into small vials that we can then place into a carousel unit here. And then the carousel goes into the auto sampler injector unit, and then it engages. And from here, if you come around, we can actually see the injection system here. So this is how the sample is aligned and injected into the flow of the mobile phase so it can then move to the column. So from here, we actually have the column, which is this big piece of stainless steel that you see. And this is where the stationary phase would be housed. So, of course, the liquid from the mobile phase is being pumped through the column to push everything through, and that's where the separation takes place. And then from the column, we can see that the um, mobile, mobile phase and the mixture is pushed to the um, absorbance detector here. So this is the um, ultraviolet detector that we talked about, which allows us then to monitor the absorbance or amount of light absorbed as each individual component comes off the column. So finally, we'd like to show you an example of a real chromatogram. So looking at the computer screen here, what we see is that we are plotting AU or absorbance units, which is a measure of the amount of light that's being detected at our analytical wavelength for the organic acids versus the um, retention time in minutes here. And what we see in this example is that we have one, two, three, four, five major components that correspond to five different organic acids that might be found in kombucha. And what we see here is that each individual acid elutes or comes off of the column at a specific time. So based upon knowledge of that time for a given acid, we can then identify that acid in a real kombucha sample. Also, we'll note that um, we have different heights or areas under the peak corresponding to each one of these peaks. And from that kind of information, we can obtain quantitative results to determine how much of a given acid is found in a kombucha sample. So why do we care? Well, ultimately, as we've seen here, high-performance liquid chromatography can give us very, very specific information about exactly which individual organic acids are found in a kombucha sample, as well as specific concentrations of each acid. And all of these things taken together can give us a great deal of information about the flavor profile of our kombucha. So, if you like what you've seen here, make sure you give us a big thumbs up and make sure you come visit us at our website at Cultured Analysis. And we'll see you next time.